Hi everybody, welcome to another session in supply chain. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the differences between WM and EWM. For those of you who don't know what that means, warehouse management and extended warehouse management. And what we're going to talk about here is when we look at what is happening in WM, what does the E stand for in EWM or extended warehouse management? So let's uh, start off with the basics. WM as a solution has been around for a long, long time and we have many warehouses, in fact, probably thousands of warehouses around the world using this solution. And the idea of this is, of course, we have a plant and a storage location. And within that, we have a warehouse attached to it. Now, within that warehouse plant storage location, it allows us to then break that storage location down into bin locations so that we can actually store stock. Quite often this is used for receiving off the end of a production line, storing, staging, and moving out obviously onto vehicles as such. It's a good solution, nothing wrong with it. Um, as I said, many companies use it. It also has the uh, radio frequency ability, which is basically the devices in here to, uh, to obviously action those goods, and um, print barcodes uh, on what we call handling units and those types of things. And it's great, nothing wrong with that. But what extended warehouse management does is far, far beyond this. And I'm going to be going through what the limitations are of WM versus uh, EWM in this session. So let's concentrate a little bit on what the E stands for in EWM. Now, before I do that, I really quickly just want to show you uh, a bit of the solution because I like to show uh, solutions, obviously, in my demos. So let's start off with the, uh, the normal WM version. And as you can see here, we use the SAP GUI for warehouse management because that's what it's built in and, and used with. And uh, to get into it, we have to obviously go through the menu path here from logistics, logistics execution, and down to our internal warehouse processes. And here we start to see uh, options and things we can do in the warehouse. Uh, so for instance, I can go into bin and stock and I can see uh, things like a bin report, uh, shelf life control. Uh, I can look at a uh, list of bins and things like that. So let's say we're going to a list of storage bins. I have to give it my warehouse number, uh, what storage type am I interested in, uh, those types of things. When I say storage type, this is part of a warehouse and those types of things. Let me give it a warehouse number it actually likes there, apologies. Um, so you can see it's very much the old um, graphical user interface uh, way of doing things. And we can see what bins are available and all that kind of stuff in there. Uh, I'm sure many of you are very aware of that. What we also have though, of course, is the radio frequency device, uh, which is emulated here on this screen. So normally, of course, this screen will be much smaller. I can go into this and I can uh, have a look around and I've got a few processes I can do around inbound and outbound and things like that. But what I'm gonna talk about are the differences between this RF use case, which is basically uh, works fine, as I said, but um, not very intelligent. It has a, a few limitations and is really just a confirmation tool versus what extended warehouse management can do. So that's just really super quick what, what um, WM looks like. Let me quickly show you what EWM looks like now. And as you can see, the user interface is quite different um, from a start. Obviously, it's Fiorized, so we have the Fiori uh, tiles and everything else. Makes things a lot easier. We also have built-in analytics, so we can see immediately uh, what, is, what are our open picks, and we can drill down into that. Uh, we can see actions that need uh, need uh, need attention straight away. So in this case, Fury is feeding me information as opposed to me having to go through a long menu path, run a report, enter lots of data just to see a basic piece of information. So for instance, if I go into my open picks here, I can see straight away what my open picks are. Uh, some of them have not been assigned yet. Some of them are actually uh, assigned to activity areas, which is great. Uh, so for, uh, and you, of course, we can drill down into these if I click on them going down to buy product and, and drill down further um, and various different ways of looking at that. If I want to go into uh, different areas for this, uh, let's say I want to see all my different um, ship to parties and what, what uh, deliveries I've got pending for them. And again, it's a lot more uh, user friendly and uh, obviously looks nice. But that's that's great having said that, but um, that's not the be all and end all of it. Let me go back to what we mean by the E and extended warehouse management. So as I mentioned, if we look at the four walls of a warehouse, WM obviously manages bin locations within that 
warehouse. So let's just draw some bin locations here. So we can see we've got, in this case, a rack. And inside our, our racking area, um, what WM does is essentially uh, organizes that and gives us a, a bin location. What EWM, of course, does is far, far beyond that. And we can manage all parts of the warehouse, everything from where we talk about uh, inbound, outbound, and internal movements, everything that's happening inside. So for instance, if we have a receiving door or even receiving from production, this is all covered uh, in EWM. Uh, and also outside of that, uh, well, let's, let's talk about in, in and out first of all, and I'll talk about outside in a second. So we have obviously more door management. We have things like advanced staging and all those different bits and pieces in here. And even when we talk about case pick filling and things like that, so let's say we had a case pick uh, area, we have more advanced replenishment techniques rather than just min-max. We have several different ways of doing that in EWM to move things around the warehouse. It has this concept of the, the purpose of what you're doing or, or the, the task type. So for instance, if I was counting these bins, for instance, in this direction, uh, I may want to, sorry, maybe picking from them, I might want to count in a different direction and pick in one direction. So depending on the task you're doing, we can actually model the warehouse in many different ways. So those are just some of the basic in and out task type movement things that we can do in the warehouse, which are way behind anything we could ever do in WM, which obviously drives uh, a lot more uh, efficiency and uh, use cases in, inside the actual warehouse itself. When we talk about comparison between the RF units, this is really important because in WM, the RF unit is really just used to take documents that have been created elsewhere and really just confirm and tick them off to say that they've actually been completed. What EWM does, I just need to go back there because I just wiped my whole drawing. Uh, what EWM does is actually take that to another level in that, yes, the idea is, yes, you can, of course, confirm picks and things like that. But what you can also do is create new documents, new counts, things like that inside the actual RF uh, itself. And what that means is you don't have to go back to the actual well, warehouse office to, uh, to create work and things like that. What it also allows is an interaction between the document and the user as well. For instance, if you get a pick denial type process where you're going to a case pick area and there's not enough stock, you can actually jump out of that uh, case pick scenario, go and replenish the stock, and then once the replenishment is completed, carry on picking in exactly the same place. So there's lots of more advanced features in here. In WM, we always pretty much have to enhance the, the RF uh, device screens to make them really usable in a realistic um, warehouse scenario. But again, it goes even further than this as well. So for instance, we have this idea of full end-to-end -end process being managed in EWM. So for instance, we have this concept of transportation unit. A transportation unit can be a vehicle, it can be a container, it can be just about anything you want it to be really. And what it can do is we can actually manage the full location from the gatehouse all the way through the yard. So, of course, the gatehouse being a check-in of the vehicle, making sure the vehicle is actually arrived or container. Um, the, the yard management part, of course, is the different parking spaces for these different um, entities. Where do they actually go? And also, which doors are they also assigned to? So, this more advanced yard management is part of the extended warehouse management features as well. And when we talk about that um, from a, a door uh, and yard proposal, we also have this idea of what we call dock appointment scheduling, as some people call it. And what that means is your external parties can actually use the system. So I'm talking about carriers, vendors, trucking organizations, things like that, can actually book using our system when they want to actually drop off at those particular doors as well. So again, just more use cases for what the E stands for in extended warehouse management. I'm going to come back to that topic, but I just wanted to show you again part of the uh, solution here. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like in EWM. First of all, how do I see my data? Well, of course, I've already shown you the, the ease of use from the analytical type view where the system's showing you what's going on as opposed to having to go and find it. Uh, but if I want to drill down into information, I have this idea of the EWM monitor. And what the EWM monitor does is it gives me every single thing in one place. I don't have to remember transaction codes and things like that. I can simply go into these uh, menus and find everything I want straight away. 
clearly cutting down on the, uh, the user training and everything else. So for instance, if I want to go and look at my stock, I can actually see my storage bins. I can see uh, what's the difference between physical and available stock. I can see stock by shelf life. A lot more options available to me here, whereas in obviously in WM, a lot of the times we end up enhancing or building reports to give us the same type of information. So for instance, let's pull one of these off now. Let's go into, I'll just see what my physical stock is. I can go in here. And again, we see lots of different fields in here, a lot more uh, rich environment than what we have in warehouse management because we have far more capability available to us. Uh, I won't select anything here. Let me just uh, go and it will actually, it's going to run quite a long report here. So let's just give me a little warning, which is fine. There's not too much stock in here. And what I can now see is I can see all my stock that's sitting in the warehouse. Uh, and everything else there from the storage type, the bin location, what handling unit is it sitting in. But when we start looking at how the system stores stock, we start seeing more and more how that extension of the warehouse is going. For instance, if we look at the idea of a storage type, uh, a storage type, or sorry, a stock type, excuse me, a stock type is telling us what type of stock is that available to us. You'll know in inventory management, obviously we only have uh, unrestricted blocks uh, quality but inside here, we can do many, many other things. Uh, we can have different combinations of those. And if you take a look at my other video around ERP uh, use cases for extended warehouse management, you'll see also how these uh, stock types can actually change uh, the inventory management layer of the system, which allows us then to see what's going on from things like MRP and ATP, which is obviously very important. We also have this concept of um, the origin of the stock, the owner of the stock, this is used quite a lot for 3PL type circumstances where you have uh, multiple owners in the same warehouse uh, and so on and so forth. So you'll see in here there's a lot more information going on than uh, we have in, in, uh, in WM, WM because we have a lot more capability. But let's go further than that. So as I mentioned, when we talk about the basics, we talked about EWM having far more capability when we talk about the basic abilities to move things around the warehouse in more efficient ways and things like that. Let's go beyond that and start talking about things that we could never ever dream of doing in WM that EWM does, of course, out of the box. This is where we start talking about those enhanced capabilities. So things like labor management. What's my actual labor going to be for the actual site? How much time are they doing? Uh, to complete tasks, how much time are they using, to, are they completing them in the right way, those types of things. We also have billing or costing in here as well. Uh, we call it billing because it was initially developed for, uh, for 3PL billing use. And we can take snapshots, we can see what time, uh, or, or when we're actually costing those. Uh, we can see how much it's costing us to lift pallets, move pallets, any type of, uh, any type of actions inside the system. We also have a much richer and easier to manipulate data model inside here. We can actually manipulate the data to change materials, bin locations and everything else inside that monitor, which gives us great control and obviously allows the, the end users actually manipulating the warehouse, who should be doing this, of course, actually have that ability to do those types of things. And there are lots more other things in here which I could go on about. That's just naming a few. Let's take a quick look at those in the menu here. And one of the quickest ways of, of showing you this is just by simply looking at the, uh, the warehouse monitor. And we can see I've got this concept of resource management, who should be doing what, where, when, what materials can be handled by which uh, resources, the queue management's in here as well. Processor is normally a person, of course, or a user. When we look at this idea of, uh, I mentioned the, the master data, of course, we can go into the warehouse attributes and actually play with the warehouse attributes uh, in here. And again, I might just quickly uh, run this just to show you what that actually looks like. Yeah, again, it's going to be a big report. That's fine. There's not much in here. So this is where we can actually start to play with the actual data itself by product. And of course, by doing that, we can actually change, you know, what's the minimum shelf life rules around it? Is it min max uh, capacities, length widths, all that kind of good stuff in the warehouse, but that's the users do it. I mentioned labor management. We've got this idea of billing as well, which is costing in many cases. Uh, and of course, when we talk about inter integration, uh, we have this idea of material flow system, which connects directly to uh, PLC layer and things like that for, uh, for our automated systems as well. In our tools area, this is where we get some really nice uh, things around um, the ability to be able to uh, play with uh, interfaces and things like that. 
Um, so I can see our message queues going backwards and forwards, and of course these link into the mature, mature flow system, along, amongst other things. I've also got alerts as well. And alerts are quite nice because they will actually start showing me, uh, as well as obviously the fury views that we saw earlier, um, what waves we've got that are overdue, what tasks are overdue, uh, and so on and so forth. And I can define my own exceptions if I want to. So all of that, everything I've just shown you in one simple, simple transaction. Uh, for the user. So no training, we can, and then we can of course change this and rename all of these folders in here to be exactly what um, your organization requires. So let's just uh, quickly jump out of here back to the beginning because I mentioned obviously this idea of extended warehouse management, the, the yard management and things like that. So I wanted to show you um, just a couple of transactions around that. We have this concept of um, the idea of uh, the shipping cockpit. And what the shipping cockpit allows me to do is to search for work that is basically being planned onto my transportation units. I can see what doors they're assigned to. I can see what deliveries they've got. I can see if they're on time, are they late, or where, what is actually going on with them through the whole process. So what's nice about this screen is it's designed for everyone to use it on an iPad or any other type of device. So for instance, when this vehicle arrives, I can select it and I can do a whole bunch of different things in here. I could release the wave for, uh, for, for picking if I wanted to. If I was working at the gatehouse, and that, of course these buttons will be active depending on what type of status we have, I could say, yes, it's arrived at the checkpoint, it's arrived where it's supposed to, it's arrived at the door, so on and so forth. So we have all this idea of uh, yard management built into the solution, and we can actually see straight away, um, some places have this on a, like a big screen in the, in the DC, so we can actually see everything that's supposed to be coming in, what's on time, what's late, and of course, where we've got any updates, the need requirement. Um, so some of the issues you can resolve very, very quickly by using the buttons above. So just uh, one screen there. If it comes from a, from a planning, in other words, how do we set that up? I can go into the shipment cockpit for planning purposes. And here, what we can see, if I just uh, run a quick search, I can see the deliveries that have yet to be planned. And I can see my available vehicles that I can put those deliveries on, the outbound deliveries in this particular case. And of course, I can drag and drop these onto, uh, onto the right truck to make sure it's going in the right place. And what's interesting about this is if it's not viable or not possible, it will actually not do it for me as well, which is kind of neat in other words, if it's over, oversized and things like that. And from here, I can very easily either select or select all, and I can then assign the staging areas, assign doors, or in fact, again, release it for, for picking if I want to. If I need a new truck, I can simply create a new transportation unit. So there's lots and lots of things that are more additional features and functionality in extended warehouse management. And I've really just touched the, um, touched the surface really in, in terms of what we can do in the solution. But I just wanted to give a bit of an overview between what is the difference between WM. WM is purely, purely in this realm here. And even then very basic, we often have to enhance picking routines and things like that. Whereas if we talk about extended warehouse management, you're really taking everything I've talked about and a lot more because I've only touched the surface here. There's a far, far uh, a wider array of capabilities and functions within extended warehouse management. And that's why SAP have chosen uh, extended warehouse management as their solution going forward for warehousing. And this is where our development uh, efforts and work are going at the moment. Thank you very much for listening. I hope I've summed up well there the, uh, the differences between warehouse management and extended warehouse management. Uh, it, a very high level summary, I know, but I hope that makes sense. And uh, please feel free to put forward your questions to me. Always happy to answer any of those. Thank you very much.